afternoon and Dr. Neerat Mehta from Imaging Division of PD Hindu National Hospital and Research Center. And we are here to talk briefly about MRI, which is Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So what is an MRI? It's a test to obtain detailed images of the inside of the human body. And since it involves no ionizing radiation, unlike say X-ray or CT scan, it's not harmful to the body. It gives us a superb soft tissue contrast resolution and makes imaging possible in multiple planes of the body. Magnetic resonance imaging now it consists of three words uh, and each has a significance in uh, the way images are obtained. First is the magnetic because it involves putting the patient in a powerful magnetic field. The resonance comes from a radio frequency pulse which is transmitted and the imaging is the visualization of the signal received thereafter. So the magnet. Magnets of the strength of 0.3 Tesla to up to 7 Tesla are used. Generally the uh, for imaging in a clinical setting 1.5 and 3 Tesla machines are used. So the magnet consists it's like a cubic donut or like a tunnel. Uh, higher strengths which are more claustrophobic are generally tunnel shaped. But you also have partially open magnets which are of lower strength but because they are open uh, they are less claustrophobic for some patients. A human body consists of 90, out of 92 elements, human body consists of 26 elements. Hydrogen ion, because it's a single atom ion, a single proton ion is the one which is most commonly used for imaging in magnetic resonance imaging. Once the patient is put inside the magnet, the protons all line up in the direction of the magnetic field like a well, so this, once that happens, the radio frequency pulse consistent with the frequency of hydrogen ion is then applied and this is generated by specialized radio frequency coils which are built into the magnet and these then proceed to align the protons together in a single direction. Once this pulse is switched off, the protons slowly return to the original state and as they do so, they give off energy in the form of electromagnetic waves which is then received by special receiver coils which convert it into a signal. And that signal then converted into what is visible images. So this is what an MRI machine uh, equipment looks like. You have the table and you have this round donut shaped machine with a central tunnel. Now uh, you can adjust the lighting and make the atmosphere as pleasant as possible. And the technician and the radiologist are looking through the glass window at the patient and the tunnel and are in visual and auditory contact at all times. So the signals are received and the images generated which are then seen by the radiologist. So where do we have application for uh, MRI? With the progress being made in recent times, MRI is now used for virtually every part of the body. From brain, spine, musculoskeletal system and joints to the organs like abdominal organs, the heart and to study the blood vessels. The procedure basically consists of patient being taken in after a change of clothes, lying down on the table and the entire table then slides into the bore of the magnet. Once that happens, 
the study is performed by obtaining various sequences which look at the body part in various planes and with different, different uh, tissue contrast. At times, there might be a need to inject intravenous contrast depending upon the condition being investigated and the images being obtained. Once all the sequences have been obtained and the technician sees that the sequences are adequate in quality, the patient is brought out of the tunnel and walks out of the system. So here are some examples. These are images of the brain, uh, different sections in what is called the axial plane. With a different sequence, you can see the different soft tissue contrast in a coronal plane. This particular study was performed for pituitary gland or in spine where you can obtain cross sections in at different uh, areas of the spine, at different levels in the spine to see the spinal canal and the nerve roots as well as the bony part of the spine or the knee. Uh, this is just an example of different sequence for the knee would be a whole spine screening and you can see it in the right from the head to the sacrum and coccyx. So uh, MRI has allowed the clinicians to treat, monitor and learn about many different diseases and the problems uh, without having to resort to the invasive process like surgery. It has also helped the clinicians to learn how the body functions even in normal state. So it has played a significant uh, uh, impact, it has had a significant impact on, uh, on diagnosis and treatment across various parts of the body and across various specialities. Uh, exceptions. Now, it is a, a great procedure which is harmless, but there are some patients who are not suitable for MRI. Primarily, it is because of the magnetic part of the magnetic resonance imaging. So this would include patients with pacemakers, as the magnet from the MRI interferes with the signal sent by the pacemaker and can actually deactivate it. Uh, it's not suitable for patients who are too tall or too obese because there is a constraint of uh, uh, length and size and weight. And patients who have had uh, some kind of an implant, whether it is an orthopedic hardware or even uh, a clips in the brain for aneurysms uh, or any metallic foreign body because these would degrade the quality of images and uh, near the vital structures can even be uh, threatening. So therefore these patients are not suitable to undergo an MRI examination. And what does the future hold? The possibility of having much smaller machines that can scan specific parts of the body, uh, the continuing improvements in seeing the blood flow and functional imaging which is actually being translated right now into clinical practice of brain mapping to see which part of the brain is getting activated uh, in certain tasks. And MRI of the lungs is as of now not possible, but that is a future direction. Thank you. I would take any questions that the audience might have. Parinita, how is MRI useful for pregnant women? Uh, MRI, unlike a CT scan, is safe for pregnant women. So not only to analyze the child for any congenital defects, but for the mother who cannot undergo a CT scan or an X-ray, MRI is perfectly safe to investigate any part of the body. Yes, Alina, is MRI safe for children? Yes, it is safe for children. Uh, in a large part of our uh, workload here at Hinduja Hospital consists of uh, children and it is perfectly safe. There are no known uh, side effects either for children or for it. MRI as of now is not a curative uh, investigation, it is a diagnostic investigation. Uh, you use MRI to arrive at a diagnosis 
it has a very limited treatment options which are just coming up for example for fibroids of the uterus where MRI is used in conjunction with high intensity ultrasound to treat fibroids but uh, it hasn't uh, it's not really a, a curative or a, a treatment modality uh, we have a question from Elena saying what if someone has claustrophobia yes claustrophobia is a serious issue with a lot of patients about 10 percent of the patients feel very uncomfortable getting into that tunnel. Uh, the solutions then lie in uh, either going for an open MRI, but it has the disadvantage of because of the lower signal strength of not being uh, so very clear, or the patient can be sedated and taken up for an MRI. Garima is asking, what is the starting age to have MRI? Uh, there's no starting age. You can have an MRI at any age, uh, including prenatal. So, no, no starting age. Does brain MRI deal with psychological issues? Uh, that is a work in progress because MRI as of now uh, deals with the structure. We're looking at the structure of brain. You are trying to correlate uh, functional imaging which is just coming up with uh, with what part of the brain get activated as a result of a particular activity so you can map out uh, hand movement or leg movement or uh, or a vision or auditory cortex but its role that it can play in uh, psychological or psychiatric uh, uh, background it's still under um, investigation, but yes, uh, one does expect uh, progress to be made in the coming years on this. How long does the MRI examination take? Well, it varies uh, from study, but generally it can take anything between 30 minutes to 90 minutes, uh, depending on uh, what part is being investigated and uh, whether contrast is given or not. Yes, that brings us to the next question from Karima, which is, will I be given an intravenous strip during MRI? No, you're not given an intravenous strip, uh, but again, depending upon the <clears throat> problem that you're investigating, you might be given an intravenous contrast injection, uh, but that is a, a call taken on table uh, once you have the initial set of images in. So, uh, no intravenous drip, but a small intravenous contrast uh, is a possibility. But Anita is again asking, are there any radiation effects? No. It, uh, MRI, unlike a X-ray or a CT scan, does not involve radiate, uh, radiation. So, obviously, there are no radiation effects. And uh, till now, in about approximately uh, 30 years, that MRI has been around. As of now, there are no known side effects, short term or long term. Parinita is saying thanks. That was really helpful. You are welcome, Parinita. Irina is asking why is it so important to lie still during an examination? Uh, we did talk about MRI being acquired in different sequences. Now, what happens is in one sequence, which can last from anything between a minute to five minutes, all the data is acquired during that time for the entire tissue. Now, if there is a movement during that time, the data is going to overlap because then the, the system does not know where the, which exactly which part of uh, the body the signal is coming from. Uh, so for that localization, it is important that the patient lies absolutely uh, still because otherwise the artifacts can uh, distort the image and uh, make it unreadable. And why is it, uh, can one take medicines at the day of MRI? Yes, absolutely yes. MRI by and large does not require any preparation. Uh, you don't have to be empty stomach. Uh, so you, yes, you can absolutely, uh, you can and you must take the medicine that you usually take or the daily doses. That will also answer the question, can I eat or drink before an MRI examination? Yes, you can, unless you are having an MRI, especially for your intestines, 
in that case, uh, you might be asked uh, to remain in the stomach for two and a half hours. But otherwise, you can eat and drink normally before an MRI examination. And are there any diet restrictions while going for an MRI? No, Parinita, there are no diet restrictions while going for an MRI. Uh, but it would perhaps be helpful if you don't take too much of iron uh, because that can then uh, cause certain distortions in the images if abdomen is what you're looking at. Uh, may I bring someone to the examination with me? Uh, sure. In fact, we would recommend that you do bring someone uh, with you to the examination. Uh, the accompanying person obviously would not be uh, uh, allowed inside the magnet room, but can certainly keep you company outside. And the moral support, so yes, you must bring someone uh, along with you if that makes you more. What is the difference between an MRI and a CT scan? Um, a CT scan essentially uses X rays. Uh, it's uh, an X ray which goes, X ray tube which is goes around the body and obtains images in different sections. So, considering that it uses X-rays, which are high energy radiation, uh, it has certain uh, known side effects for prolonged exposure. The single CT examination is not, uh, uh, not dangerous, but if you're having a lot of CT scans of the same part over a short period of time, there are effects of radiation. Since MRI does not reuse radiation um, or high energy radiation, there are no uh, side effects. So that is the difference, essential difference between CT scan and MRI. Of course, there are the technical differences uh, because MRI is possible in multiple planes, whereas CT scan uh, is only in one plane imaging. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages of MRI because it gives a better uh, soft tissue contrast in CT, etc. But uh, essentially the difference comes down to the way the imaging is done and the image is required. How do I prepare for an MRI examination? You don't really need to prepare. You have your normal food and come at the point nine to the diagnostic center or the uh, MRI center and uh, you really don't need any other preparation. Anita is asking, can I get to know about cysts during MRI? Yes. One of the advantages of MRI is that it can uh, very well distinguish between fluid-filled structures and uh, non-fluid-filled structures. And uh, certainly, you can get to know about cysts uh, during MRI. Is MRI a problem for breastfeeding uh, during when the mother is breastfeeding? No, it is. Uh, not a problem for mothers who are breastfeeding, uh, except of course if the MRI for uh, breast is asked, uh, then it uh, whether it would give information or not would be a question mark, but otherwise the MRI is not a problem for breastfeeding. And neither for the, for the mother nor for the child. Yes, but if a contrast is given during an MRI to the mother, uh, it would be recommended not to breastfeed the child uh, for about 24 hours after the MRI examination. But, uh, but that is only if contrast is given, otherwise there is no contraindication. Uh, why do doctors need previous x-rays, CT and MRI scans? Because imaging is never done in isolation. We have to remember we are not you don't treat images, you treat the patient. So it's important to know what was happening and compare it to what you see on the images. And a lot of time, the information available from the images would make sense only in view of the past information and not in isolation. So when you're looking at the patient as a whole and uh, the body as a whole, it is uh, important to know what the previous imaging showed and then you can compare it with the current level and come to uh, your conclusions. That is why the invariably want previous CTs or MRIs or ultrasounds or X-rays uh, when you come for an MRI. 
Why do doctors want to know about the metal implants in head if one wants to get their back scanned? Uh, you see what happens is uh, when the back is scanned, uh, the, the area of interest is the back. However, the entire body is in the magnetic field. The, uh, so, since the entire body is in the magnetic field, the magnetic field impacts the entire body. So, if you have metal objects in the brain, for example, um, a lot of times they used to put, uh, they still do put aneurysmal clips inside the arteries in the brain. And under the magnetic uh, influence, this can move. Uh, and you can understand that anything moving inside your brain or your eye for that matter can be dangerous. So therefore, irrespective of which part of the body is scanned, the technician or uh, the doctor would want to know whether you have a metal implant anywhere in the brain. What kind of clothes does one need to wear during an MRI? Uh, because of this about metal, uh, generally most of the centers would uh, want uh, uh, would want you to change into uh, a cotton dress with nothing so one must remove all the uh, metal uh, parts in the metal ornaments etc uh, clips etc so therefore it is generally the patient changes into a hospital gown or a set of clothes for the MRI and one would also recommend uh, not to use uh, makeup based on metal for example mascara etc because that can also uh, give rise to certain artifacts but besides that there are no special clothes you need to wear. Parinita uh, she's asking hope that MRI is not uh, painful in any manner no it is not painful at all you don't even feel anything except that it is noisy so most of the centers would uh, give you earplugs and uh, some centers like ours would even provide you with a headphone and ask you what kind of music you want to listen to while you're undergoing the MRI examination. So no pain. You can actually just lie down inside and if you're not claustrophobic, uh, even go to sleep. Uh, Sony is asking what happens during an MRI scan. As far as the patient is concerned, it is nothing but a lot of noise, a lot of clanging noise which would come when the patient is inside the tunnel uh, as the different uh, radio frequency waves are applied and the gradients move. Uh, but that noise is just an irritant. Uh, it is not threatening. It is not harmful in any manner whatsoever. And uh, once the sequences are uh, completed, the patient is just brought out, and that's all that really happens as far as the patient is concerned. Ah, no, MRI room is not cool, the temperature is adjustable, uh, but it is slightly colder than a normal AC room, so it is generally kept at around 21 22 degrees centigrade, uh, and that is because uh, of a technical issue that uh, MRI, uh, the magnet consists of a coil which is immersed in liquid helium which is at a temperature of absolute zero which is minus 270 degrees and you can't uh, afford to let it uh, boil off so the temperatures are always kept uh, slightly lower than normal in an MRI but generally the patient would get a, a nice blanket tucked in so uh, it's not really an issue thank you Elena for being here and if there are any more questions, then you are welcome to get in touch with us at Hinduja Hospital uh, in the MRI department or the imaging division. And we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have.